on that good work by you guys. Look, I wanted to get into this by saying uh, my background is in evidence-based medicine, clinical epidemiologist, and um, I'm very interested in the uh, safety and efficacy of these vaccines. I'm following some very good presentations so far. Look, we want these vaccines to work <clears throat> as Americans and as global population. So I think the message has to be that we're not coming at the FDA, we're not coming at the CDC trying to raise issues and, 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 and just... Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Yes, it's not that we want to raise issues and concerns, but here's the issue. We want it to work. But when we look at the surveillance, when we look at the surveillance coming out of the VAERS right now, CDC, it captures 1% of 1 to 10% by our study of the published literature of the adverse events. And that is very suboptimal because it doesn't give a proper capture of the burden. So we really do not know what the adverse events and the deaths are. So we want proper safety monitoring boards. We want proper ethics committees following up on these vaccines. We are calling for critical event committees that we do not seem to know whether they exist. So we want the FDA to get on top of these vaccine developers and the CDC and put this in place for the safety of, of Americans. And it's a simple issue. You are giving us vaccines, and this is what we have been clamoring for. If you have <clears throat> an investigation of a vaccine with 1,000 samples, you put 500 in each arm, and you follow that for one year, versus you have another study of 100,000 people, and you follow that for two months. And the safety events that we are looking for, the safety signals happens at about five to six months. How could that larger sample detect them? And that's the issue. We are calling for longer-term studies, larger sample size, but longer term. We need the medium and long-term studies to best assess the safety and efficacy, particularly safety, particularly when you're talking about putting these vaccines in our children's arms. We currently do not have the safety data. We actually do not. And for anyone at the CDC, anyone at the NIH and anyone at the FDA to claim so. That is being disingenuous to the public. Now, I wanted to end by saying this. When we look, I looked at a study this morning by Chen on testicular infection post-COV, SARS-CoV-2 virus. That means that there is an issue, and we are extrapolating. We are extrapolating based on the Japanese data that looked at the lipid nanoparticles and the mRNA that were accumulating in the tissue in the rat model. Yes, it's a rat model, but we have to extrapolate to humans. That showed that the lipid nanoparticle, the constituency of the vaccine is accumulating in the ovaries, in the testes, in the spleen, in the adrenals, etc. So when somebody like Nicki Minaj, I have to invoke this, make that statement. That's not a joke. People want to make this a joke and parody it, etc. But this is a very, very serious consideration because we even have animal data that shows us that there's a drop in fertility in the animal model. So we need this properly investigated. The public needs this answer properly. And I want to end by saying this. Under no condition, none, zero, based on the evidence today, must children be indicated for these vaccines. There is no risk to children, no statistical zero in terms of spreading and in terms of getting serious illness or dying from this. Dr. Martin Macaria, Johns Hopkins, they looked at time. all of the tests. Hello? Yeah, uh, we're, we're out of time, sir. Okay, thank you. You can wrap it up. Yes, we looked at the, we looked at the, the children in America that have died, and we found that save one, most these children had at least one severe illness. So the reality is COVID is not a life-ending, life-threatening situation for children. Right now, CDC and the NIH have not prosecuted the case as to why these children should be vaccinated, period. I say do not do this, and I beg your consideration. Thank you.